didn't see you there. I was just reading up about heuristics and fallacies in decision making. I'm Lauren and I'm gonna help tell you about that. And I'm Brittany. And I'm Sophia. And I'm Sam. Psychology. You may or may not have heard of this term, but this is something that affects us in our everyday lives. So today we'll be talking about how psychology, specifically heuristics, fallacies, and decision making, affect your lives. We're talking about heuristics and fallacies and decision making, we should go over what exactly those terms mean. So first, there's a heuristic, which is a mental shortcut or a rule of thumb that you can use to make decisions. But these aren't always right. And then second is a fallacy, which is just a mistaken belief, oftentimes based off of an unsound argument. The first heuristic we're going to cover today is the availability heuristic. So this is judgments that come from your available information, but this might not always be correct. In research by Slavic, Fishhoff, and Lichtenstein, they showed that an example of the availability, availability heuristic is risk perception. This basically means that most people think that accidents occur more often than people die in, a, say, a stroke, due to the fact that the news covers accidents more often You guys should just skip. I'm not sure. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Dude, everyone skips class. It's not a big deal. Mm, yeah. No, I think you're right. Like, I mean, what's wrong with skipping? Like, Stacy I mean, skipped last week. Oh, she did? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought she was sick. Okay. Um, I mean, if everyone's doing it, like, Stacy should skip too. Yeah, yeah, why not? Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I, let's get tough. Okay. Now, on this skit, Lauren and Sophia made the mistake of thinking that everyone skips because they could only think of one person who skipped, and that would be Stacy. In this example, they are using their availability heuristics. Next, we'll talk about confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is the fact that people focus on information that supports their beliefs rather than information that refutes their beliefs. In fact, Petty and Cassiopo found that. People seek and evaluate evidence that confirms their beliefs and ignore information that um, undermines their beliefs. Next, we're going to talk about my side bias. My side bias is the fact that people seek and evaluate evidence that supports their prior political, religious, and ethical beliefs. I can't be one so She is so dumb. But she is so smart in our math class, she knows all the answers. Does she really, though? So, Abraham Lincoln was our first president, right? So what went wrong here? We saw that Lauren's confirmation bias was at work when Sophia made an uninformed remark about the first president of the United States. We also saw that Lauren dismissed Brittany's remark which rejected her confirmation biases. Up next, we're gonna start talking about schemas. Now, what schemas are, are models that help to shape our expectations of the world, including people, places, and things. A good example of this is a schema of the classroom. Now, if you walk into a classroom and see things like books, pencils, students, those would all be very consistent with what your expectations for a classroom is. But if something like, say, a lion were to suddenly walk in, that would be very inconsistent with your expectation of what it means to be sitting in class. Alright, so another bias that we have is called hindsight bias. Now this is the belief that you could have predicted the outcome of some past event. Now a good example of this would be a basketball game that you and your friend both watched. You could be discussing the game and your friend could say like, oh that was such a close game, I was afraid that we weren't going to win. But then you, after already seeing the game, would have been like, no, I knew they were going to win all like this whole time, but in reality you did not know that. Game last night. Oh my gosh, it was so nerve wracking. That game was way too close. I don't know. I, I knew we were going to win. The boys always come through for us. Now let's talk about gambler's fallacy. So gambler's fallacy is the mistaken belief that future events are affected by past events. For example, if you're tossing a coin and you get heads five times in a row, you might predict that because you've gotten heads five times in a row, that the next one you would get would be tails. But events are actually independent of each other, and past events cannot predict future events. Well, the answers are both have been 
C. I think number seven is C too, but I don't know. That doesn't seem right. What did Lauren do wrong? She forgot that just because she has four C's doesn't mean her next answer can't be C. All answers are separate from each other. They're independent. So past events, or past answers in this case, can affect future answers. So now, after learning all these new words and definitions, hopefully this will help you make better decisions in your life. And that, kids, is psychology.